about the data access and external data source put into the other, uh, let's say, uh, complex event processing and all that. Okay. So any way that you can make review is not for the data Well, the, the legacy systems did not produce the canonical model format. The legacy systems actually were not aware about sending the event. The adapter's job, which is the customer, you know, the customer piece that's here, was aware about the legacy format as well as about the XML canonical format. So it would change the proprietary format of a system and into an XML format. Yeah, I understand. I okay. that canonical uh, event format Co Well, there, there is two standards. So the payload was itself an, an OHS BOD, which is this is an industry standard for you know let's say some financial order you know order processing and everything else. Now within an industry, there's something called WS eventing, and there's a couple of other. Within CEP, there is no currently format for for this event. So we had a WS event uh, wrapper essentially with the uh, with an OHS BOD payload. So could you repeat that? That's the analog, analog right? Yes. They use the window, right? That's the window system. Or they use the oh. So the question was, how did the analyst actually get data, get access to the CEP DSL to, to be able to change the rules? So you know, the short answer is, they had they had the ability to change the rules in uh, in a browser. Uh, because you were, you were able to introduce a, actually a scene based front end that manipulated the CEP. The longer answer is you would obviously wouldn't that changes those changes into production. So they, there was a, a whole process that was powered by JBPM, which is a workflow tool uh, that kind of you know migrated the, the ch rule changes from environment to environment and ran all the automated sanity checks. So the answer is they had a user interface which was JBoss scene based to be able to change change the rules and then you know, JBPM powered. Okay. Anyone? Sure. How big was the system? Like, how many customers within a volume? Yeah. Well, the customer again, the the front end facing facing customer is not. Oh. oh yeah. So the interesting thing that the event volume was huge because those. You know, the, the, even though the customer number is small, they are having very large portfolios. So on this side, we were getting up to, I would say, between 50 to 100 million events per day because, you know, some of the stuff had to do with trading data. So these portfolios are very large. Uh, things like mortgages and banking transactions. And how many, like, primary keys do you end up having? How many customers do those events translate to? I would say that the customer number was in, in about 100,000, the, the total customer number. I'm not sure about the primary key, but again, I mean, that's what I mean you know, oh, just how many customers. So for instance, you know, in the CRM, right, there were about uh, you know, 50 to 100,000 customers. But again, the number of events that were flowing through this pipe, there are fine grain events. So for instance, every small change in a, in a market, right, let's say if IBM you know, went down, it would definitely trigger maybe 50,000 events because it propagated across the portfolios. So on this side, they, the amount of events was huge because it's really raw data that you're dealing with. On this side, we, may, we would publish out maybe 20,000 events per day. So you know, talking about uh, 50 to 100 million coming in, and this is the whole power of complex event processing because you do, the front end systems do not deal with you know, this myriad of data. They actually get a very, very coherent event. So coming in, yeah, it was large. Absolutely not. So again, the objective of this bit was that we cannot, it's a low intrusion type of approach. So that is why the adapters were created. They actually were co-located with these systems, but they, we didn't make any so, uh, cha uh, code changes to the systems itself. They actually knew how to interact, for instance, with Siebel or they knew how to interact with Medevante through either through API, understanding the file formats, or understanding their database system uh, schema. So they, again, it's a low improvement. It's, it's not feasible to go out to all the vendors and ask them to publish this. Uh, somebody gave me three, okay. Oh, this is three minutes, I understand. So, any questions? We have three minutes.
we can we download this PDF from that? If you give me a card, it will be sent to you, but I'm sure they're going to put it up on the site someplace, um, PDF format. So, yeah, this is definitely, um, if you guys take away anything from, from this conversation, if you are doing SOAR or if you are, you are doing any type of event-driven um, event driven architecture, CEP is definitely the, the next iteration of that. I mean, what kind of tool you use to handle the about the rule and the yeah. Say, say it again, the question is... What kind of tool, tool you, you have used to handle... Uh, oh, the DSL? And, uh, and uh, they want to do Okay, so JBoss Rules gives you an ability to create a DSL, which is essentially a domain-specific language. Uh, they, had, they essentially have an API and some formatting files that you can basically create this domain-specific language. So because what it does is it takes this domain-specific language in and you know transforms it back to you know its own rules language. So obviously it just comes with uh, with that out of the box. So uh, you need Eclipse. To, you need to compile part of the DFL Oh, it's not a compilation. It's a pretty much a metadata type of language. Yeah, it, it, this is metadata. So essentially, it's not compilable. The DSL, I mean, JBoss rules is like a virtual machine. Essentially, takes this thing and tr compiles it down to their standard rules, read algorithm, or nodes. Uh, this is, you know, to make it easier for. And again, one of the goals was to have business analysts and, you know, kind of developers work on this. So this is really uh, a tool for them to be able to worry only about complex event processing and not worry about, let's say, a drool-specific language, or JBoss rule-specific language. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you.